Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Real Estate Trifecta. My name is Carlos Salinas, Mr. You Don't Need 20%. Back at it again, episode eight of what we got going on. We're going to have 10, 10 episodes this season. Um, we're going to be finishing strong, and then we are going to take a little break as we prepare to go into season two. Uh, I want to take a moment because my guys have been everywhere my guys have been everywhere <laughs> these dudes man i swear to god i am i am literally bl i'm blessed to be in the presence of these guys man uh my brothers uh mr insurance guru take it away but introduce yourself man introduce yourself i am i am kevin span kevin span the insurance guru kevin span Happy to be here today between my <laughs> brothers. Um, I got to deviate from my normal introduction because I'm under immense pressure today Ooh, from a fashion why? standpoint. Oh, oh no. Here we no, go. No, no, no. no. Ask, here we go. This is on video. So Listen. my man Lou is in the, in the incredible powder blue. The summertime powder, powder blue. blue. I'm on yeah. the tie because Lowe's <laughs> always come in GQ down. Yes, he tie. does. Yes, he does. And they changed on me. He's rocking the uh, suit with the open collar. I like that color. He's super casual. And here yes. I am in my New York mint colors with the wow, blue Wow, so I like that. If I, if I, my and you're, you're rocking it well. A certain way today. That's why it's the it's the fashion pressure. It's not the insurance pressure. Some it's the summer plum. pressure I'm Some, under right now. Summer, summer plum. plum. Yeah. But I, I got a I got a blaze in the closet. I'm there gonna you bring go. out of Lou gonna do that. All right, all right. Next week, next time. <laughs> if he's gonna do that. Kev, you always look sharp. The orange, I complimented you on the orange tie right away. It pops. And uh you're always sharp. Uh so no need to feel any pressure whatsoever. You are the man. Thank you, Mr. CFP. Talk yeah. to the people. Tell them who you are. Yeah, so uh, Lou Soriano, CFP, um, you know, I, to Carlos's point, we were pretty active this past week, but before so we were active on podcasts and such, and I really enjoyed uh, Kevin's podcast with Sean Waller. If you it. have not listened to that podcast, um, I listened to a lot of podcasts, and that was one of the better ones that I've heard this year, Absolutely. honestly. So give Sean, Sean Waller strictly free Sean game. Sean Waller strictly free game. Shout out to Sean, game. who yeah. I had planned on shouting out. Yeah, um, give him a listen. Definitely want to, you know, he is also a signature premier agent, so shout out to him. Um, yeah, strictly free game, another brother that you can tap into. Remember, uh, we do this because we love to do it. There's so much information out there that – we are able that we learn through the course. Because remember, we ha I wasn't born with this. I've really literally started to learn this over the course of the past five years of my life and preparing. I feel like I'm catching up. So if you have an opportunity to, to sit down and kind of like check in on free game, you know, the real estate trifecta, uh, Sean Waller's strictly free game. And I also want to shout out Kevin Iglesias and uh, his homeboy. Um, James Chowdhury. James at the Real Estate and Chill podcast. Real it's Estate and Chill. Real Estate and Chill, who's actually, they actually shoot at this studio uh, in the room behind us. Another great uh, podcast for you guys to check up on. Absolutely. You know, a lot of, a lot of stuff is uh, being given away as far as information, things that you can definitely tap into. Uh, before we get started, I want to shout out RCG Mortgage, who is one of our sponsors here at the Real Estate Trifecta. We appreciate you guys for seeing the vision. We appreciate, we appreciate you guys for the support. And I want to shout out Tim McGarren from Guardian Angel. Love you guys. Appreciate you guys. Uh, if you are in need of a home inspector for your next purchase, Tim is definitely the guy to call for the job. Um, Y'all been busy. A little bit. <laughs> Y'all been busy. And, working. you know, I'm not mad because, you know, we actually took some, we all took some time off. Yes. Um, that's why we're shooting another episode a little later than we normally do. Uh you know you are somebody. You know you into some things when you are rocking. It look what looked like a linen paisley button down. Summer pink. It wasn't, it wasn't like a, it was a mix between salmon and pink, where the button goes down, not the second button, 
But you at about the third button. That's the disco button. You know, you at the, you you at the like disco the button. Club. There you go. The third <laughs> button is down, and the second to the last button is up. You know you somebody. When you in some white linen pants with no socks on, smoking a cigar on damn near a million dollar yacht. I'm going to tell you right now, he was looking my good. man has been out there. Kev. Just shout out to my yeah, son. Yeah, yeah. I got. I don't know. Uh, shout out That's... to my my namesake Kevin Span the <laughs> second. You out he was, there? Uh, kind enough to bring me and his brothers. His there two you brothers go. On the podcast. Love it. Went to Cali last week. We ran around. I told Lou we had no plans to do any tourist stuff in California. Absolutely. We stayed down in Marina del Rey. Woo. And on Friday, our second to last night out there, we got to ride around on a nice yacht. Nice. And uh, just enjoyed the company of myself, my sons, my nephew flew down and met us, and a few of uh, Kev's really good friends. Shout out to Chef Lex Grant, his special friend. Nice. Um, and we just had a great time. 100%. Spending a few hours talking, listening to music, and uh, enjoying the yacht life. Sometimes you have to stop. Sometimes you have to stop what you're doing and uh, rest, relax, yeah. reflect a little bit. Yep. And uh, and we did that, man. So I'm 100% He's back and recharged. Yeah, back, man. Back, recharged, with and the, ready to go. With the fresh fade, brother. Yeah. I see you. Know, yeah. I see yeah. you. Kev, I was uh, looking at all your posts and your pictures, and I was getting worried. I said, I think we lost Kev. <laughs> <laughs> I think Kev went from North Bab to Beverly Hills. Wow. He went from Babylon to Beverly Hills. Listen. But now he's back. <laughs> He's refreshed. He's recharged. But you're right. You have to do those things, especially with your family, kidding That's aside. Fact. That's a and fact. And one thing I've always respected about Kevin Spann is, um, well, there's a lot of things. But this one thing I think resonates with me when it comes to you, in all seriousness, is how much you talk about your family. That's it. Always. So I did uh, a podcast with Kevin. And uh, truth be told, I was just so wrapped up in thoughts about business and this and that. And then Kevin says, I'm going to start this over and give you an opportunity to reintroduce yourself because I know you have a wife and kids and everything. And that stuck with me because I said, wow. you know what? This is a guy who, like, to his core, his ground, his grounding is family first. It is with me, too. But sometimes we get wrapped up in this and we, we forget that. So uh, I always admire you for bringing up your family uh, always. Well, our, our family is, is our compelling why, right? So 100%. we started this show off. I don't know if uh, Mateo the boss will make it to the clip, but uh, before we got <laughs> started, right. Mate- Carlos's uh, young, young man was here. Yeah, man. But um, our family is our compelling why. 100%. And whenever you go through what we all went through, a year and a half of quarantine and sure. all those words I want to forget and all the things we had to wear to survive it, um, you can lose your way and you can lose your why. But when you wind down with your family, when mm. you hold them and you turn the rest of the noise in the world off. No doubt. This is why I do what I do. This 100%. is why I go so hard. This is why I strive to, in the insurance business, take care of other families, right. is because of my family. And I see the people I get to work with, not as clients or customers or family, because I love hearing everybody's story. Everybody's journey is a little bit different. Mm. And I delve into that, Lou. And yeah. once I hear it, just like I did with you on a podcast, I actually do that with uh, prospects. I ask them about their situation because I want to understand what you're trusting me to insure. Because it's not just a house. It's not just a car. It's not just a life insurance policy. It's yours. It's 100%. yours. Your, and your family. Your grind is different, Lou. So you started off yeah. this by saying... A lot of this is new. You've studied along the way. Hundred percent. That's what I love. Yeah, and you know, and it's it's you're never too you're never too you know advanced in life to learn new things. And I had to, me personally, I had to make that. I had to take that dive. And I'm still learning today. That's a fact. I do this. You every know what day. I mean? Like right? you're I don't every day. I don't claim. Seriously. I don't claim to know everything, but no, I know I know some stuff. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? I know I'm I'm very uh, prepared. Uh, I don't like to go into any situation unprepared. I think right. uh, preparation is everything, and it it, it actually segues it segues into you know one of the topic actually the topic of conversation today, uh, generational wealth and breaking the curses yes. that um, compound a lot of our societies. So uh, we're gonna dive into that, but um, yeah, man, we. We are family first people. Um, I just got back from Miami because, you know, 
right? My you're saying Mateo's other half, the other half of his family, they all from Miami. He don't he ain't got nobody up here from that side. MIA. That's what I'm saying. So we've taken the responsibility in deciding to travel down there, you know, That's at least awesome. four Man times important. a year. Absolutely. I want my boy to know everybody. Have to be you know, try to be there. <laughs> and who's saying that we can't do some business down there either. <laughs> some conversations <laughs> and meetings I had down in Miami. So you know, and you know, there's some things right. to come. But um yeah, man. Uh, I love that y'all are family first. And I think when I decided to, uh, when we were discussing this, it was one of the factors that led us to be here at, at the tables that we're at yep. because of who we are and how we represent our families. I love that y'all are about that life. Um, we got a good one today. Yeah, sure. Um, no guest, you know, just us. And I think within the three of us, there's a ton of content that you guys can feed off of. I, I advise you to sit down, strap in to every episode that we drop. Nothing but jewels, nothing but gems. Uh, shout out to Jay Barnett for, you know, putting us out there on his page. Uh, I got a lot of people that hit us up. Uh, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, Jay Barnett King. Jay Barnett. James Barnett. Nice Barnett. Think Jay uh, Barnett. Breakfast Club. So yeah, I watched, yeah. after that, that brother, shout out, I watched him on the Breakfast Club. That brother Club is amazing. Game. You know, we appreciate him. And uh, definitely give him a follow on on the gram. Um, let's jump into it. Let's go. Let's go. All right. No, no, no. Let's go. <laughs> Bring the energy. Wait, yeah. wait, wait. We got to pause. Hold on. Before we jump into it, we want to take a brief commercial break. Uh, for my guys at RCG, dropping some jewels for you guys in the real estate. I'm sorry. In the mortgage and real estate world. Check it out. Can I borrow more than the value of my home? With a VA home loan purchase, veterans can borrow up to the appraised value of their home, including some costs and fees associated with the loan. Home buyers interested in making energy efficient improvements to the home can add up to $6,000 to their mortgage to cover those costs. On a VA cash out refinance, my team and I can help you refinance up to 100% of your home's value. You can use that cash to consolidate debt, renovate your home, and even as a down payment to purchase another property. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back from a quick brief. I know you was hype, Kev, sure. and uh, wanted to keep that energy. So let's go. Let's, keep it. let's, keep it. let's go. <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it. So we had conversations earlier in this week. I spoke to both of y'all, you know, with um, in reference to the topics of conversation today. Uh, generational wealth and breaking the curses of generational spending and, you know, fund allocation um, where you're divvying, divvying up monies in, you know, what you earn versus what you owe versus what you pay. So I'm going to dive into the real estate aspect of it because me personally, it's going to be quick. I have questions for y'all that are more but real estate is a big part of it is it is i'm not i'm not i don't their yeah. biggest asset i don't want to pass down right i don't want to you know play it off like what i do isn't important but um given what has been circulating in the current news mean news mainstream um there's some stuff that i want to run past y'all okay. just as far as correction so as far as the uh, real estate aspect of it, um, I got a call this week from a really good friend of mine asking me what the difference is and how important it is between renting and owning. You know, uh, I rented a house all my life. My mom, you know, as stubborn as she is, love her to death. You know, she's set in her ways and that's just what it is sometimes. Uh, she rents in the city. I love her to death. Still go visit the, the old neighborhood. It is what it is. So, um, of course, like I said before in the, in the, in the past five, learned a lot. Took in a lot. I started to understand and process a lot. Um, the differences. So I was able to speak intelligently when this really good friend of mine called me and asked me what the difference was because she sees I'm out there. You know what I'm talking about. I'd be a good resource to, you know, discuss mm -hmm. these things with. And of course, anything that's discussed with me is always confidential. No matter how long we've known each other, I am not uh, allowed to, be. Yeah, yeah, to, be. to discuss any personal business. 
uh, almost like a doctor and a lawyer. So I take it that serious, love what I do, and I would never want to jeopardize that. So um, this young lady doesn't have any children, uh, and, and it's okay. Uh, but I don't, you know, I don't know if it's in the cards for her. And if it's not, that's all right. And if it is, cool. You know, mm -hmm. it's another kind of conversation. But she asked me, you know, if it's smart, I've been renting a condo all this time. I'm very comfortable. Why should I buy a home? And I said, well, you know, there, I could, I could be here all night. <laughs> She's not but, the only one with yeah, that question, so that's a great right. question. Right, I could be here all night. So I said the quick answer to that would be ownership versus you making somebody else rich. The easy way to put it. Um, there's so many benefits to home ownership. And because today's topic of conversation is about generational wealth and breaking generational curses, uh, I'm going to stick just to the one as far as passing down wealth passing down equity, passing down uh, assets. Some people consider them liabilities, and that's okay. Uh, I always have this conversation with, you know, financiers, people that are really, you know, that delegate in money. Um, I'm a little in the gray area. I understand why it would be considered a liability, but I also understand why it's considered an asset, depending on where you buy. Um, I was lucky enough to purchase an asset, I think, uh, because of the amount of appreciation um, where my house is located now is going to gain over the next 10 years. So I'm very, very lucky um, in one of the best school districts. Um, never in a million years, you know, a boy from the hood growing up, you know, that kind of lifestyle. Yep, hard sure. knock. It was hard knock. Yes, sir. I could tell you some yes, stories. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Would ever think that I would be here in the area that I live, the life that I'm living. I think we uh, all the company. Yes, yeah, yes, the indeed. company that I I'm holding. I felt that way too. Yeah. Every day. So <laughs> for me, you know, we weren't, I didn't, you know, there was no financial literacy classes in school, nor were there any people in. And there still aren't. Cor correct. Sadly. Yes, as far as <clears throat> curriculum. But there weren't people in a, people around me because we. I was in a bubble of renting that could really talk to me about how to save money or not just save money, how to make money work for you, mm -hmm. how to make the money that you're spending, make more money and not yep. have to spend what you earn. So that's another topic of conversation. I'm gonna let Lou talk about that later. But for me, for today's topic, passing down wealth, passing down equity, you have an asset, you, you own something. It is family owned. You Absolutely. can do whatever you want to it. Anything that you work on in the home, it's just gonna help appreciation. Um, when you, you know, move on to wherever it is you're moving on to in life, after some time, uh, you will be leaving your family with a security of, you know, options, whether or not they want to keep the house, whether or not they want to sell, move on, do whatever they want. But at least you've left something to your family or your heirs to make those decisions. Simply as put, um, again, there's so many there's so many avenues I can go into right now, but because of today's topic of conversation, the the main one is just passing down wealth, passing down equity, you know, getting a piece of the pie, owning your piece of land, you know, half it's an acre, American quarter dream. acre, the American it is. dream, it is. white still picket, is. vinyl fences, because if you're still putting up wood fences, I swear to God, we're going to have to talk. <laughs> <laughs> have, that's a whole we're going to have to talk yeah. about something. You know what I mean? But yep. yes, that's, um, that's where I'm at. And I want to dive in and I, I want to pass. I want to. I want. I want to throw the no look to my man Kev. We're gonna start with Kev because it's not just passing down wealth in home ownership. It's preparing for what's to come with insurance. With any home purchase comes home insurance. So, what can somebody look forward to when they speak to you on how their asset should be protected and what else they can do to prepare their family to break these generational wealth curses i know they're we speak about it all the time term whole but you know what are some things like let's say a whole life insurance brother there are so many avenues and things you can do to a whole life in uh life insurance policy that can benefit your children speak on that so let's start with the uh, let's start at the beginning. You know, uh, you refer people to talking about home insurance. So the first thing we 100%. do, first thing you can expect from me is 
the beginning of a relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, the beginning of a relationship where I'm going to ask you questions yep. about the house to make sure the house is insured properly because, as Lou said a minute ago, that's probably your first and most valuable asset. So 100%. rather than just looking at it and give you the fastest, cheapest price I can possibly give you, I want to get to know you and your wife or whoever helped you buy this house sure. and how important it is to protect it. Sure. Number two, I'm going to let you know two things that's not included in your home insurance. I'm going to tell you there's no flood insurance. And if yep. you're south of Sunrise Highway that's a fact. or some area that uh, in the flood zone, we're, uh, we're recording this on the same day the tropical storm Elsa hit. That's right. I'm going to tell you we're going to have a conversation about it. You might not need it, yeah, but we'll yeah. talk. I'll also let you know that your this home insurance does not come with any mortgage protection life insurance automatically yep. to pay off the mortgage. God forbid something happens to you okay. or whoever you bought the house with. So that's the beginning. So moving forward to life insurance, a whole life insurance specifically, and the role that plays in generational wealth. Um, let's start with why, Carlos. You started at a, a, the deep end of the ocean, so I can't just swim on the surface where my sure. feet can touch the sandy beach. Yeah. Um, no socks. He was on the yeah, boat no, with no, no socks. socks. Okay, guilty. <laughs> guilty, <laughs> guilty, guilty as you know, guilty you know you're charge. feeling that's yourself, where, boy. That's where I was at. That's where I was at. But... Um, <laughs> When it comes to this American dream, and we all have one, and it's alive and very well, because that's a different dream for everybody, depending on where it begins, sure. generational wealth might not have been a conversation. Sure. So our job right now when this generation is to make it a conversation to talk about 100%. how mom and dad, grandma, auntie, uncle, whoever worked hard to accumulate it, Let's get some life insurance in place. Let's pay pennies on the dollar, which is the key to wealth for any situation, to buy life insurance that's going to be there forever. The benefits of whole life insurance is many. Number one, most people talk about cash value accumulation. 100%. That a part of the money that you pay for the policy goes for the insurance or your death benefit to pay you and your beneficiary, God forbid, if something happens to you. Number two, why the wealthy like whole life insurance is because the cash that you put into these policies, it accumulates on a tax-deferred basis and lose the tax experts, so I'll defer to that. But basically, within certain policies, you could put more and more money and to it, you buy it with after tax dollars and it accumulates tax deferred. Number three, there's a lot of living benefits in a whole life policy. Oftentimes, people struggle with the concept of life insurance. And I've had husbands and wives say this to me. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm going to buy life insurance so she can get somebody better the next time. <laughs> That's and not, uh, that's I'm not. always humble and honest. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, that is, based on that answer, I've heard that too. Oh, maybe, maybe God. she should, but that's not my answer to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Your coffee but, starts uh, to taste a little different. It, it, it yeah. tastes different, a but you chemical. You got to stay in the game. <laughs> and you let people know that you know if this oh, is forever, God. forever, ever. Um, yeah. Then you want to have that in place, but there are living benefits for you. So when you're doing this as long as I have, I've helped a lot of people with the living benefits. Use their cash value to pay for education. Sure. Use cash value to pay for home repairs. Use sure. cash value to pay for weddings and just to um, that cash flow. Sometimes there's more going out than what's coming in, and you need a way to go to borrow from yourself. And there's many stories of people starting incredible businesses. Disney. Using Walt Disney, case in point. We talked yeah. about it. Walt Disney. Use it. All the banks rejected him. That's a fact. And Walt Disney started that wonderful little place in Florida and California as well called Disney World with cash value from a life insurance policy. So All the banks debted him, right? It wasn't just— it, no. he he. It was no, there they was just no, said no, okay, they just they said, said no. There's no way nope. that people are gotcha. going to come to spend an amusement vacation park. money to come here with these characters gotcha. you created while you were living in a barn. We right. don't see it, Walt. Right, right. We don't, we don't see it. So Walt. they didn't, Walt, we didn't see it. They called him by his, his first name fact. then. Yeah, not Mr. Right. Disney right. then. Right. Mr. He didn't Disney. go by Disney then. It right. was just oh, Walt. Walt. <laughs> just Walt. Came in with the loafers, the, the with, penny with, loafers. With, with, without, without a doubt. So <laughs> Pay less penny loafers. The, the why of it, though, is because we're not discussing it at the dinner table. Right. We just know this last year and a half, we had a lot of unexpected death. 
and families did what they had to do to sure. get through it. But fast forward, it's a great time to have conversations about not only being prepared for final expenses, sure. but generational wealth. What's your family story? Yep. How did y'all get to Long Island? How'd you get to New York? Everybody's yep. backstory is yep. a little bit different. Some came through Ellis Island, some didn't. Some came through South Carolina, same. Mm-hmm. some came um, through the Middle Passage. That's my family came through the Middle Passage. Whatever that backstory is, we're here now. So let's talk about general wealth, generational wealth, and let's move the conversation forward. But Lou, I'm going to pass the ball to you Mm -hmm. because uh, Carlos talked about a lot of the tax concepts and some things that people should be taking advantage of and talking to you about from 529 plans to the correct accounts and everything else. So talk to the people. Yeah. So um, I'm listening to you and I'm learning from you right now. Mm. Um, so when you were talking about, and, and, and I'll touch on all these things. So yeah. bear with me. Sometimes I'm on these things, but I have questions too. So <laughs> <laughs> here we go. Um, so when you were talking about like the cash value um, of these uh, whole life insurance policies, and I refer to them as permanent policies, yes. permanent policies uh, yeah. because there's more than whole life is actually a type of policy. Correct me mm-hmm. if I'm mm-hmm. wrong. And then there's variable life. There's variable universal life. There's there's all different flavors of permanent insurance. All variations of permanent insurance. There's but whole life types. is the most common. Term and permanent. Companies call it different names, but you're right. Exactly. Permanent so, is the real name. Yeah, and I, the, the only reason why I point that out is because there are more than one type of policy that will last your whole life. So, But with, they're often referred to as whole life policies. And... The uh, sub accounts and, and things like that I could get into, but I'm, I'm not going to now for the sake of time. But uh, when Kevin is talking about putting money and you have this money grow tax deferred, uh, this is true. What I sometimes find, though, Kev, is people want to cash out these policies, which mm-hmm. I would not recommend doing. Correct. Unless you were going to get another policy of equal or greater value at a lower premium or whatever the case might be, Right. But when you should be aware that if you cash out and not take a loan against your cash value, that is a taxable event and it's taxed at ordinary rates, not at capital gains rates. So by that, I mean, if you put in 10,000 into a policy and it grew to uh, 20, 30, 40 grand and you take that money out, it's not taxed at the favorable capital gains rates. It's uh, you would minus your premium. Anything above that would be tax as ordinary income, whatever that might be. But you're right, Kev, uh, these policies can serve multi-purposes, education being one of them. I prefer 529s over life insurance for that purpose. Um, But that's me. You know, everybody has a different take. What's the difference between the two? Because that was actually one of my questions. A lot of people know 529s as the college fund. So if you had a choice between the two. Obviously, we we recommend everybody to really hone in on right. life insurance, perm yeah. policy. But would it be smart or what would it be beneficial to have both? Can we both answer it? Yeah, go. Cool. Okay. I'm going to give, give you the ball first. You go 529. Oh, this, that's a oh, this is good. Yeah. We never had this, Section but okay. 529 is a very specific tax code. Correct. So you talk about the tax code first, and then I'll talk about, I'll answer that question. Okay, great. No, for, I always you, defer to you, I defer, man. I defer. I defer. You are Mr. CFP. Let's, let's, let's those rock, letters paper, mean scissors, a lot. Right? Somebody got to do it. No, those letters mean a lot. We don't call them Mr. Well, CFP for <laughs> kicks and grins. Uh, and those letters mean a lot. But here's the thing, Kev. Right? There's no blanket answer to that. There's no yes. correct answer to that. He's trying to trip me up. It was a trick question <laughs> because why? Everybody's situation is different. And right. I'm going to sit across from somebody. And I'm going to recommend a term policy. And then that's, I might meet somebody else. I'm going to recommend a permanent policy. Why? Everybody's situation is different. So that's why I would, I would um, say it really depends on you and your situation. And that's why it pays to speak with a financial professional, whether that's a CPA, CFP, an insurance uh, broker or agent. Um, I was asked a similar question earlier today on another uh, podcast, and, and, you know, that was kind of my response as well, uh, because these people will pay for themselves, I promise you, um, if you're working with the right people. But 529 plans, just coming full circle, Sure, I like 529 plans most of the time, a majority of the time uh, for college savings, and here's my reason why. 
you put money into these accounts. It could be anything from $50 to $1,000 or whatever you decide to put in these things a month. Um, you could put it in on an annual basis. There's almost no limit. There is a limit, but, you know, it's a pretty high limit that you could fund these accounts with. And um, is unlike, it a high limit monthly or is it a high limit no, in total lifetime? Yeah, in lifetime. total lifetime, you can put whatever what, you want into these things. What do you, what's the cap? Because remember, we're talking about different. To, to be honest, we, with we, you, we go across the gamut. It's, it's, there's no one person that we don't. Yeah, do there's it. almost no cap True on cap. these. Okay. Some states, you got to be careful. Every state runs their plan different. These are state specific. Yep. So I'm very careful about what I'm saying here. Yep. But let's assume there's no cap in your state. So then that's not a concern. You can nice. put whatever you want into these things. But the reality is I had some clients who overfunded 529 plans. And I said, instead of putting money in there, you should start thinking about long-term care for yourself. You should start thinking about some other things because when you overfund these things, you know, you got to kind of use it for educational purposes. Otherwise it's taxable, but just coming full circle, why I think 529s work for a majority of people is you put money into these accounts. The um, money, hopefully, is going to grow over time. And when you take it out and use it properly for college expenses, it's tax-free. Not only that, you get a tax deduction for in New York. So here we go with state-specific again. If you're in New York, you could get up to a $10,000 deduction on your state tax return. So that's like a double benefit was and it always 10 or did it, it's was always it been 10 okay. it uh, should be indexed a little higher but sure. it has been almost um for as long as 529s have been out for about 20 years or so um uh, 10 000 for new york state specifically now for 529 also there are it when you say your money grows does it grow at a percentage or is okay it just, good question go ahead thank you you don't know See, this guy, he's good. So <laughs> there are really well, we three do, options. There are three options, and then I'm going to give it to Kev, and we're going to talk about insurance for educational planning. But there are three options when you put money into a 529 plan, as far as I see it. You could put your money, they're basically mutual funds. I don't want to get, look up what mutual funds are, and that's what you have as the vehicle to invest in. And the most plans have target date fund, target risk funds, or you could pick your own portfolio. Target date funds. I put money into this account. Mateo is six months old. He has 17, 18 years until he needs this money for college. So they are going to allocate that over time where it becomes more conservative as he reaches college age. So by the time Mateo is 17 or 18, that portfolio composition is maybe mostly cash and bonds with a little bit of equity, where in the beginning right now, it'll probably be 100% invested in equities and in stock. Target risk fund, you say, listen, I'm not worried about this thing getting more conservative. I'm an aggressive investor, or I'm a conservative investor, and I don't want this thing changing over time. So you dial it into a portfolio based on your risk. The third one is you pick your own portfolio. They give you a menu of funds, and you can pick an S&P 500 fund, a bond fund, or this fund, international, and you choose your own mix. So that's 529 in a nutshell. With the risk, mm -hmm. now remember, he's a, he's, he's a baby. You right. know what I mean? And I've, I've spoken to investors, and you know, especially now within the past five that I've been doing this and jumping, because we're going to jump right into you right in a second. I didn't forget about you, brother. I, I didn't. That's okay, a great cool. answer. So I'm listening, yeah, I'm yeah. learning, I'm soaking it in. I, <laughs> I'm curious because when you're young, you can afford more risk. Yes. Right? Okay. And should, by Right. The way. And when we mean risk, you can afford to lose money because nobody ever wants to lose money. But like any, I guess stock or bond, you know, following the market, everything, following market trends. And we're talking about the stock market trends, S and P five. Um, these, they, they go up and down, you know, any, any stock broker tell you, you want to buy, you want to buy low, you want to sell high. So, um, same thing in real estate, by the way, and <laughs> everything and everything. Right. It, right. So when it comes to the, or let's say Mateo's portfolio, the parents are the ones that are dictating the course of yes. investments yeah. concerning the portfolio for their children. Yes. Yes. Okay. And and that I wanted to clear that up because 
you're, you're yeah, speaking. but could I just I just want to because it's it's in my mind right yeah, now. Yeah. We're talking general. Write down the words you're going to say. Go, ahead, go for it. <laughs> We're talking generational wealth. Correct. Right? You know what generation it starts with? Not our kids. It starts with us. No question. So when you're 100%. saying it's but up to the parents yeah. to invest a certain way, guess right. what, parents? You should consider that. Consider that um, not taking a risk is a bigger risk than taking none at all. Um, you know, so think about what your child's life would be like 18 years from now if you took on a little more risk now. 100%. And by risk, I'm not talking about gambling. I'm not yeah. talking about, oh, I heard so-and-so talk about, I hear AMC, I hear crypto, none of that nonsense. Not that it's nonsense, but I'm talking about investing, not speculation. Correct. Uh, and there is a track record of, you mentioned the S&P 500, mm -hmm. over time. I think there's only been one time in history over a 10-year period where your money would have been worth less 10 years later than it was, uh, n you know, when you first started. And that's since, like, you know, the beginning of time, basically, ah. right? right? So, yeah, it's, it's up to the parents to do things themselves now to provide that generational wealth. So and insurance plays a big part of it. We going we going brother we going to get to you. Rolling, I, I didn't rolling, forget about you because I wanted to make rolling. sure cuz again, it's breaking generational curses. It's 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 imploring parents. You don't need to earn a gajillion dollars. You don't. You don't need to have you know, you don't need to make $100,000 a year. At one point in my life, I made 36,000. You know, stayed at a job, made forty six thousand, ten thousand dollars over the course of I don't even know how much how much time I was there, but I knew it was a dead end. So you know, I wasn't. I had a had a you know an IRA and everything, uh, which I want to talk about as well because there's a lot of stuff that parents you take all of this stuff in, right? And now it's like, damn, what, what the hell I'm gonna be left with? I ain't even got food to eat. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like I can't go grocery shop because it's tied up in my kids. <laughs> You know, 529 fund, and he's going to be eating lovely when he goes to college. I know I didn't. I was ramen noodle all the way. <laughs> I'm but, a product uh, of that. You Los, know what I mean? Los, you raise, you Go ahead, raise, please. You raise good yes. points. Um, please. A lot of people look at what they earn Correct. as the reason to invest or not invest, 529 on insurance. Yes. Um, it's actually a word that precedes that, uh, which is just budgeting. It's budgeting 100%. and spending. It's not what you make. It's what you keep. So before I even jump into insurance. Financial literacy. Um, everything, Lou. Everything you said. I'm writing notes. I'm just agreeing. Right. A hundred percent. When you were talking about Mateo and the mutual funds yes. behind it. I'm writing down class of 2039 funds when Mateo oh, there is, you go. Right. is 18, that the money is and there. And that, that yeah. would be a we still got to We still got to talk. Don't think I ain't forget about my <laughs> right. meeting, brother. We got to yeah. talk. We got to talk. But <laughs> we got to talk. Those are target date funds. It's yes, discussed. sir. It's a, it's a target date fund. So, Los, you, you asked a question, either or. What's better, the 529 yes. or the life insurance? Yes. And Lou answered it perfectly. I don't mm -hmm. have a lot to add to it. Or take away, um, I'll enhance or just contribute. I'll reinforce with Lucy. That's the right word. I got a question for you. Um, that it's just about that family's unique circumstances. Correct. Um, a lot of it comes down to: Are you a good saver away from these plans? You know. So um, Lou and I, because of a couple of licenses that we have, we won't uh, discuss in a podcast format. Um, we're responsible for having deep conversations with you about risk tolerance and what you already have in place. Um, certain people have some very good things in place already mm -hmm. that can address some of these future needs. Some people still have access to good retirement plans at work. Some people have some money that they're sitting on someplace that they haven't thought about what to do with yet. So a professional and advisor CFP like Lou or myself, we're going to have conversations about what you already have. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to address the gap. And then what's the best path for you towards the future? Uh, then I'll come back to the two words I, I began with, um, budgeting and spending. So one of the differences in working with financial professionals and having conversations about generational wealth is focusing on the future and not being caught up in the now. Correct. So we talked about the American dream and we talked about the different paths. Everybody's American dream is a little bit different. Mm. My office is in Queens, so I insure 
every ethnic group in the world. I insure people from every country in the world, every faith in the world. And everybody got here a little bit different. Uh, just speaking of my background with how we came to the country and where we are, because of um, not having so for so many years in the black community very specifically, when we get it, there's been a tendency over years to show that I have it by spending, by showing you in a variety of ways. Just shake your head a little. So I'm going to just tell the truth now. It's easier to show you how well I'm, I'm doing it. I'm shaking my head because I agree with you. Yeah, I'm so shaking my head because it hurts me to it, my it core. Hurts, but this you is know what I mean? It has, to, it has to hurt and we got to get there the right way. So because of not having, I want to show the appearance of wealth in all material things. I want my wrist to shine. I want my fingers to bling. I want all of this to shine from my head to my toes to create the appearance of having. Correct. And one of the challenges of our generation right now, and you, you hit it right on the head, is up to just generation, is to have conversations. Do we want to spend whatever you're currently allocating to material things right now to show money today? Mm -hmm. Or are we willing, based on the budgeting conversation, based on the income that's currently coming in, and the expenditures that are currently coming out, what that monthly budget is, yep. is there some extra money and how much of that extra money can you allocate to any aspect of this conversation? What can you allocate towards a 529 if that's the right answer? What can you allocate towards life insurance if that's the right answer for you? Based on what you can allocate, is it better that you start with a term life insurance policy or a permanent life insurance policy? And I would say the beginning of this all starts with the conversation and a decision to make some sacrifices and do something different for your family than what the prior generation was able to do for you. So you you use the word um, generational curses. Yes, sir. You know, uh, it's a generational curse to not be in um, the conversation or not to know. And we, we can't participate in the blame game. It's not about blaming our folks. No, it's no, no. understanding yeah, the it, starting line. So I'm going to personalize it now. pass the ball. Nah. Um, I am a child. My father, so I'm born exactly 100 years after the Emancipation Proclamation. Now, 1863, I'm born in 63. My dad is born over 50 years later, and he was came into the world as a sharecropper in South Carolina. Sure. My father went into the military and used his VA loan to buy the house and the land where his parents lived mm -hmm. so they could become homeowners. 100%. And he came to New York and he worked. So that's the beginning of the transition for my family. And then sure. he comes to New York and he works and he accumulates an asset that becomes a home and... 65 years later, that same house he bought in New York is still in our family. I was about to ask so you that, if you still have it. Yeah. That's the beginning of the right. conversation because yeah. one person makes a sacrifice to do something different right. and to spend a little bit different. To right. Spend a little bit different. So that's that's the beginning of it. It's a decision. Let me, let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Why are we not aware of these things like why are we not aware of it we don't the places we go for our primary sources of information are not having the conversation so if okay, everyone okay speak on it because you, yeah everyone process that as you will yep uh your primary source of knowledge whatever that means to you in your community we're not having these conversations there's also a person in the insurance business that's no longer available in the urban community in the urban community 50 to 60 years ago, there was a person called the debit agent that went door to door that collected insurance premiums a few dollars at a time. There's very few companies that Don't conduct that. business that yeah. way. So with all of our advancements in technology and everything that we have access to to have conversations, we don't have the one person that's, Lou, you have your nickel this week for your policy. Lois, you just added Mateo to the policy, so I need to collect a dime from you. And I know last week the check wasn't right, so this week it's a quarter. We're going to make Do up. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, why that. well, that's, what, our, that's a big part that's, that's missing. That's why our grandparents right. had it, but that's why generation, this generation doesn't have a jump in, Lou. So I'm here, and if that was caught on camera that I'm on my phone, trust me, I'm not texting or not paying attention. <laughs> Kev's got a notepad, and I'm over here like, 
point, good point. <laughs> I'm writing we down write notes. Our, no, we write notes. I'm this, writing down notes, notes for myself. <laughs> so so don't, don't think for a second yeah. that I'm not dialed in here. In fact, it's quite the opposite. So when I'm listening to you, Kevin, you're talking about, like, you know, we're worried about, um, you know, the bling and the chain. And, the, and, and I saw a meme on Instagram or Facebook, don't remember which, but it was like Warren Buffett and uh, Bill Gates. And it was like, oh, here's two guys worth a quadrillion dollars. No doubt. And not a Gucci not belt. Not one Gucci between belt them. in sight. Right, right. No or that's doubt. what it was. Right. Yep. So, so I, I send that to my boys all the time. Okay. So that's one thing. And then the other thing, I feel like we got off a little bit on a tangent because when we're talking about generational wealth, I'm going to tell you that a 529 is not the, uh, that's not no. going to do it. No. It's, it's a big part of helping your kid get ahead. Correct. It is such a tiny Structure. part of. Structure. Right. However, um, insurance is the number one thing. In 100%. my opinion, I 100%. do not like even speaking with yep. my clients unless we talk about what their insurance coverage is like. Yep. And uh, day one when I met Kev, we had that discussion due to an article in the Wall Street Journal. And if you're interested in hearing that conversation, it's on Kevin's page. And I have some clips from that as well on Instagram. But um, with the insurance, uh, with the 529, I just want to bring it back to if you're a young family and you're, you're bringing up budgeting and you mentioned budgeting, yep. you got to primarily create some space in that budget to make sure you're properly insured if you have right. someone you love who depends on your income, number one. Mm. Number two, retirement. You have to plan for retirement right. because you cannot borrow for retirement the way you can borrow for a college education. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing. So if you're funneling money towards um, an education fund, Kev, that's why I, 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 I yes. felt so important not to get too Come far back. into this. Let's bring it on back. Listen, yeah. here's the core. You got to plan for uh, insurance and make sure you're properly covered there. You also have to plan for your retirement because you can't borrow for that. And then 529 and anything else after that. It's a, it's, a, it's a sacrifice. It's a process. Probably the one thing we didn't say about 529 is that section 529 of the tax code. Yes. Is that money is very specifically earmarked for higher education. Correct. So it's not for the other things, which is why insurance is yeah. so important. Is that insurance you could do those other things. is set aside for the beneficiary to do what the family needs to do with it. And that's insurance 101. Right. The, the next level of generational wealth is planning. Correct. Or trusts. Yep. Wills, estates. So you can Which, pass the house and the other family assets off the right way in the most tax advantageous way yes. to your beneficiaries. <laughs> which is another a, conversation. Which is, and, oh my God. Uh, which is so important for yeah. generations to, to keep it. And we Correct. talked about it on a prior show about how some celebrities, we'll talk about celebrities because yep. we know them, yep. um, went through that and they didn't do it. Correct. But the one celebrity I don't think we talked about was um, Kobe did great planning, and not only do it one time, he met with his financial planning team every year to update his trust, wow. his estates, his will, yep. to make sure that as more children was born into yep. his family, to make sure as he was more passionate about more causes, yep. such as the homeless in L.A., that he always adjusted it to make sure. So if anyone's listening to this and you're looking for the silver bullet, the one answer, there isn't one. It starts with a decision to do something yeah. different. And the first decision, do a little research and then yep. have a conversation with a certified financial planner, Mr. CFP, that's what it stands for. Yep, thank you, Or sir. a financial um, professional such as myself so we can start you with the uh, key questions first around your budgeting, your spending, and understanding what you have already and what your future goals are and how it might help. Yep, and uh, to Kevin's point, it, it's a team you need to assemble. Uh, I'll just keep it brief because I know we're going on a little bit here, but a uh, financial planner is a great person to have on your team. A CPA, great person to have on your team. Your insurance agent and broker, great people to have on your team. So collectively, n no one profession has all the answers, and that's why you got to pick the brain of a, of a few. I... Before, before we move on to the next topic of conversation, because we have a few topics of conversation, it's generational wealth and breaking that curse. Yeah. These are just methods. These are examples of what you might be able to do. It's not the end all be all. So I just want to make that clear. These are just suggestions that we have, that we actually happen to have 
information on that we're just trying to share. Yep. And we want to make sure that people understand it's not the road map. These are options you can take. And when Lou and, and when Lou and Kev say speak to a financial professional or your insurance professional or your real estate professional, it's only because we are sharing a wealth of information. It's called the real estate trifecta for a reason. Uh, there are three avenues. You'll always get hit with every path that we we think would work for you guys. And we just want to make sure that that's clear. So again, um, as far as methods, uh, we speak about the 529. We speak about whole and term life insurance. Lou, I had I had threw you a, a, an alley, not an alley, but I had threw you a topic of conversation that just recently, you know, came to light about me. Yep. Or came to light to me was about a custodial account. Yeah. So the custodial account and how uh, it's just another method on how parents can help mm -hmm. prepare their children when they reach of age. And then remember, I, I'm only using that because the generational wealth, like Kev said, starts with the family or starts with the person in the present. You want to make sure you prepare your family for the future. Planning, budgeting, and preparation. This is just another example of how that might work as far as what you might want to do for your children. Uh, a custodial account. Yeah, so works. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Custodial accounts it. kind of fell to the wayside once yep. 529 came out because yep. in the past, 529, um, these custodial accounts, they were called UGMA, Uniform Gift to Minors, or Unif UTMA, Uniform Transfer to Minors accounts. And usually they were using mutual funds and you didn't get a state tax deduction for it. And when the money came out, it was tax at capital gains rates, whether that was at the parent's rate or the child's rate. Yep. So those are all negatives uh, for UGMA or UTMA or custodial accounts. But a, but a method nonetheless. It's still around to, now. But I'll tell you still, what, they're coming ahead. back into favor. There you go. Because people are realizing like, hey, I could buy an individual. And, and, and I got to make this uh, kind of disclaimer you have to do your due diligence. Anything Correct. I'm saying here is just for educational purposes. Correct. I am not making any recommendation whatsoever. That's not what he says behind the camera. Yeah. <laughs> so just <laughs> understand that and, and understand that this is really for information, uh, informational or, and educational purposes. Uh, but these custodial accounts, you could buy, let's say, an individual stock that you're fond of. You could buy another alternative asset, put it in there. Um, so yeah, that, you, that you're is putting enough. it in that custodial account for your children. Yep. Essentially, where you can manage. It's just it, a title. Yeah. Where you can manage these mm -hmm. assets and these funds, so that when your children are of age, let's say you know you put in about two hundred two hundred dollars right a month. Uh, you know whatever that grew to whatever that grows to yep. in you in know the span of eighteen years, years, years it's like be fifty thousand or right? more mm -hmm. at a rate of let's say seven percent turns into you doubling your money for your children yeah. over the course of time yep. so that when you are all said and done and your kid is ready to go off on his own, you're preparing him with not only a portfolio, but, you know, credit, you know, assets yeah. and ownership, especially now that he has the house that eventually is going to get passed on to him in his name, right? you know, you're setting him up for success. And hopefully all things go right. There's a big risk with custodial accounts and another big negative why people don't use them is that once your child reaches the age of majority, yep. which in New York is uh, 18. 18, some states, again, you got to check with your state. Some is 21. That account becomes theirs. So That's to right. your point, you gotta if teach that them account grew to some be- Some financial literacy. Oh, you could teach them yeah. all you want, but kids are kids at the end of the day and at 18, 19, 20 years old, yep. they may decide that there are uh, things that are more important to them to use that money and the parent does not have control of what they do because that account will be retitled in the child's name. Oh, I'm whipping that ass. I'm yeah, yeah. But, but that's, you can, but guess what? Years, I'm a whip. The money I'll is gone by then. Up, so look, you call. I, I, I held Mateo today. <laughs> that ain't happening. Very solid, so. Yeah, yeah. You got me. And Uncle Kev's got, got his back. He's so solid. That's, he's solid, so. And Uncle Kev's got, got his back, I'm so it's not going to happen. I'm going to put money on that fight. But, Old uh, school. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> but people are using him again, though. I, I hear them talked about on some, some financial shows that I listen yeah. to, and Unique ways that they can be used in 100%. ways that 529s can't. So, you know. I, I like I like the fact that it can grow. Uh, you know, they, assets they can grow at, can. at a percentage. 
And you well, know, the thought it, of that. It depends, Carlos, and this is something too, um, just to clarify. Yeah. People ask me sometimes what's better, a Roth IRA or an IRA or a 529 or a custodian. Yeah, yeah. The reality is it all depends on the underlying asset that you're using, whether it's a stock right. or a mutual fund. Right, right, right. It's not that the account performs that way. Think of it this no, way, No, no, of course. It's like a savings and a checking account. Yeah. So if you say which one gives you more interest, yeah. right, it's going to be a savings account. But if you went to TD Bank and I went to Chase, well, I might get more interest at my bank than yeah, yours. Facts. So it depends on the underlying bank. Yep. Same is true with all investment vehicles, IRA, 401k, 529 custodial. It all depends on the underlying investment within that account. I And the only reason why I mentioned that um, is because these are topics of, again, you, you said they were coming back. Uh, these are topic of conversations mm-hmm. that I see when we're doing our due diligence as far as uh, trying to keep up with the times and what people are discussing. I want to make sure that a majority of our watchers understand, you know, what the avenues are that you can dive yeah, there's into. Options. There's options. Super options. Go ahead, brother. You uh, want yes? Yeah, it's on it. it uh, I want I want to go back to the financial literacy part of the conversation. Just and that's where it starts. It yeah. Take away all the insurance. That's terms. the foundation. It's, it starts with a conversation of how did we get here? Hundred percent. How do we wind up living here, and, and how can we change it? And I would encourage everybody listening, uh, parents out there, talk to your kids about money. 100%. Talk to your oh kids about God. money, about yes, what's sir. coming in and what's going what's out. going out. Yes, and sir. And then you can give them, this is why I want you to excel in school. Mm. This is how I got here, mm-hmm. but this is why I want you to excel in this area. Yes. You know? So this is, this is how and this is why. And... Um, I, before I lose this thought, because you mentioned uh, you were talking about a single person from the neighborhood before and home ownership and things like that. Yep. Um, a lot of people on this side of the table make mistakes with single people. You know, yeah. they're single. They may not have kids. Yeah. And our community, they're some of the most valuable people in the world because maybe they're that one child mm-hmm. that made the sacrifice. That's right. That has the the great job. That's right. And there are a lot of people that depend on their income. That's right. So them owning that car, or condo, them mm-hmm. owning that house, them having this planning conversation with their assets in their future, they're really the ones that's going to carry out grandma and grandpa's wishes to make sure it's a little bit better for the next generation. But those are the conversations that every family has to have. When you say family, though, right? And I really want you, I really want to hone in on this because, you know, not every family is perfect. None. Right? No, not every family. I mean, None. I'm talking about uncles and cousins, None. people you don't really see, but only at yeah, the cookouts one. and not at Christmas. <laughs> you know what I mean? Not not every family is perfect, but the families that stick together, the families that are putting money into pots, the families that are all lining up. I'm talking about cousins, uncles, sisters, you know, brothers, mothers, fathers that are collectively that all have the same last name. The Johnsons, the Sanchez's, the Wilsons, the Salinas, the Salinas, the, the Spans, <laughs> yes. the Sorianos that yes. are lining up to, to make sure that the entire family is set off are people that are lining up to, to buy these insurance policies, whole terms. Because mm-hmm. think about it. When somebody's not around, that money gets put into a pot. You don't need a GoFundMe page for no damn funerals. You don't need, you know, to be asking people for money. The whole family good. All of y'all are good. Everything happened. And then think about it. That turns into estate planning. That turns into, you know, you and your family owning businesses, corporations. You starting... I don't. I don't give a fuck what it is. It could be. It could be a knitting company. You, y'all knit some sweaters. Whatever comes. That's whatever what it is. Come, whatever comes natural to you. I had lunch with. Uh, I had lunch with a guy yesterday, who owns some rental properties. Okay. I said, you know, how'd you get into the business? Yeah. He said, I was kind of born a landlord. I said my family had a four. Oh house my God! Yes, sir. And from eleven to twelve, I liked to tinker things. So whatever went wrong in mm-hmm. any of the units, I was the guy who fixed it. And he said, Kev, my parents could have bought up the block. Families originally from Haiti. But every time a house so became say, available, they would call another relative, and then they would buy it. He said, so I couldn't it. wait until I became of age at like 21, 22. He started buying properties, yeah. and he loves being a landlord, and he's great at taking care of people. You know who's a landlord that I found out later on? 
Slick Rick is a landlord. It's a beautiful thing. The man. ruler. He the owns ruler. the ruler is some he guys. He got some properties. I didn't know that. I found out not recently. I'm known for a while, but kind of blew my mind. I was like, there's Damn. so many. And we yeah. were talking before we started about uh Shaquille O'Neal. Yeah. And there's an episode. We talked about a lot of podcasts today. There's another one I want to recommend called Earn Your Leisure. Earn Your Leisure. In which yes. um in which Shout Shaquille, out to those two brothers. Yeah, in man. which Shaquille is on now, uh, um, uh, the most recent episode, and he talks a lot about financial literacy. And we were talking, I, I heard you talk, Kev, about getting a job and going to school, working hard, and, and so you could get that job and, and do these things. Unfortunately, they don't teach financial literacy in school. No. And I read a quote, no. or I heard it on this podcast, Earn Your Leisure, and it was something in lines t- uh, in regards to a, fin- um, a formal education can get you a job, but a financial educa- uh, financial literacy will get you anything you want. And that's that's the that's, ultimately that's what we were talking about when so we were talking about this. You guys might you guys uh, follow some of the things I put up for my trip to California. I'm hanging out with my sons on a yacht, and my son <laughs> put it up. Talk he heavy. Told a story <laughs> of what I told him when he went to college. He's Student athlete, mm-hmm. play ball on a scholarship, whatever. That's it. Shout out to but CW Post, Long Island University. What I told him to learn is how money works in this country. Yes, sir. And he's learning it and he's applying it because it's important. Because the way that it works nationally and internationally yep. and is very different than the conversation you might be having at dinner tonight. And and I'm still learning, Kev. I'm and doing I'll this 25 years, right? And when you were asking, we were, Carlos and I were speaking earlier this week in preparation for the show. And um, we were talking about like, hey, why do you think financial literacy isn't as like um, you would think everybody would know some of these things at this point. Um, And it surprises me too, because I feel like this younger generation, they are so much far advanced than we were, Kev. I think so anyway, than I were. Access to more information. Right. Which is why I'm surprised they don't know. It's applied knowledge that matters. The word educate simply means to pull out. But mm-hmm. you have to, and there's a lot of empirical knowledge. Right. We can, we don't Google on the show. We just talk to you people. But we can <laughs> oh, yeah, you can see that. answer to any question right. that empirical you want. Empirical. Empirical. You have <laughs> right. to apply it. That's the SAT word, brother. I wasn't yeah. ready for that. You, you have to, you, you can't have just, to, you can't you be do, using words. You have to apply it. it. Yeah. But these, these, I'm, I'm talking to people in their 20s. They're making more than uh, I make now. And it's because uh, of the information that's available to them. It's because. They said, hey, I don't want uh, a nine to five and no knock to nine to five at all. By the way, there are more benefits along with nine to five. I don't even want to go down that path. But what I'm getting at is they got this information. They know to invest in some of these alternate investments that sure. uh, I don't even understand. And I'm so amazed by the, the, the amount of knowledge they have about them, how they have the wherewithal and the knowledge to start a business. And, and things like that. But then when I ask them, hey, are you an LLC or an S-Corp? They're like, nope. You know, no, no. I don't know the difference. I want to know about this. And I, don't, I, never, and I was like, wait a minute. You got all this stuff going on. You got two, Which three Which I want to segue into, but go ahead. And you I'm don't say, know that? And say it surprises thing. me sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to say one thing. I'm sorry, Lou. Nah. But, Lou, you started your journey with a job from 36K to oh, 46K. Yeah. Exactly. So my, my first job working for the city of New York, mm. I was making 16900 So mm. I was balling. Mm-hmm. And I would come home and tell my mother as I got raises, Mommy, I'm at 19. Yeah. I'm at 21. And she always had the same financial literacy response to me. That's good, baby. Save something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Save something. Mm-hmm. Save something. For a rainy mm-hmm. day. And then Absolutely. fast forward, you look up when you didn't heed those lessons. You're yep. like, you ain't got nothing. <gasps> yeah. Now you working check to check. Check, check. This is what fact. you meant. That's the one this thing that concerns. That's the one thing that concerns me more than anything. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're talking real estate trifecta here right Joe. all you realtors out there you guys are killing it you're making good money and the mortgage uh people in the mortgage industry yep. as well um you guys are making more money than i would have thought uh at my age mm-hmm. right you're doing so well and you're preparing for taxes you're doing all these things the one thing i find that they don't do a good job is save yeah. and that's just young people in general right. not you realtors but i'm i'm up and i'm gonna oh, tell yeah. you and and i first and foremost you mentioned uh earn your leisure i remember something that they had said uh, really quick, because I, I tune in from. I'm not. I'm not an advocate. I, tr- I try to watch as much as I can. Yeah. When I say I watch everything, I watch everything that the people around me are doing, mm-hmm. so that you know we can all stay informed. But I, I did check in. There was one thing that they had mentioned, especially for us. Oh my God, I I remember I bought a pair of Jordans. Bought a pair of Jordans. Talk about it. Yeah. 
and it's probably a sensitive topic and I'm not I'm not I'm not shaming anybody that does this cuz it happened one time and one time only. Mm-hmm. I was one of those people that was online for an absorbent amount of time mm-hmm. and I was like uh, like 19, like 18, 19. Cuz right, I wanted to pair, you know, I wanted right. I wanted to pair lever joints. You know yeah. what I'm saying? The 11, I wanted the 11. Let's go. Right? I'll never forget. Not only was there a fight at the at the front of the Foot Locker, right? They deaded everybody because of the fight, and nobody got no Jordans. Now you mean to tell me I was waiting on this line? People have lost their lives. Hundred percent. People it's like the eight ball. Remember the eight ball jackets? Of course. Yeah, the eight ball. Now I'm now I'm dating myself, but <laughs> you know what I mean. That was yeah, this was anyway. That, right? that was. I remember brothers was losing their lives. Now yeah, 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 but. You know, the, the brothers on Earn Your Leisure had made a point to say the amount the the amount of money you spend on a pair of Jordans. A couple of shares of Apple. Google. It costs less to purchase Jordan. a share in of Nike. Nike. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And when when you listen and you talk about saving, mm-hmm. I can't I can't stress enough because yes, these young people out here that are making all this money. You listen to people in, uh, from our generation. We're only speaking from experience. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it hurts when you see. I know. I know people that are making mm-hmm. 80, 90, whatever the case may right. be. You know, when you get to the six figure, you know, marker, which a lot of top producing agents are at. That's a that's a number that you got to consistently be at. You know, because things around yes, you start to change. Yes, you need to plan and save. And you know, when it comes to allocation of money, you know, if you can, you can distribute it through funds. Through you know, please set up your LLCs, S corps. I know yeah. you you speak about it all the time. People ask you all the time what's yeah, the difference all the time. between the two. Um, I'm an LLC filing as an S corp. You can do Excellent. that. Yes, yeah, yeah, it's very easy to do. Hundred percent. You've never really actually. I've seen some of the podcasts. You've never really mentioned that as yeah. far as the differences between the two. Yeah. Some people don't understand that you can actually merge the two. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, I am. Yeah. A, I am. I am my own boss. I don't talk and ask for nothing from nobody you know what i mean and there is a uh, there is a high when you say that with you know force without any question without any, you know what i'm saying you 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 feel a certain type of way you can go on vacations you ain't got to ask nobody no 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 no. you know what i mean Los, can i come back to something please like, on, on real estate so we're, we're yes. speaking about this and i've, I've got the long gray beard right now because we got to start yeah, wrapping yeah. it up but yeah young people i don't say this with judgment i say it as a young person that made every mistake that you're making 100 percent. right now when i first got interested in buying my first house yep. i was 28 chicago and i was loaded i had 11 dollars in savings 11 dollars. remember this and remember this they one. Boy. And uh, my friend, uh, rest his soul, bought a house before me. He said, Kev, they're going to ask you to explain why you were late on these different things, whatever comes up in your credit Sure. Board. And intuitively, I knew why. Well, I was on a run like a year before, before I left New York. Right. Certain clubs were popping. I oh, stayed yeah. dressed for every club. Oh, yeah. And if, you know, if I bought something to Bad wear quarters. instead of paying that bill, yeah. that was the that logic. That was the choice. Right. So I understand your logic. Yes. But there comes a time. When that time comes and you begin to make that change. Latin quarters was popping. I don't know much. And you had to be fresh. Oh, yeah. You always had to be fresh. You had to be fresh. Wow. Yeah. Wow, wow, it's wow. A cool meal. Yeah. It's a, it's a plate. It's a Thanksgiving. It a yeah, it's, it's a Thanksgiving, you know, plate. You know, and, and y'all got a little bit for some warm-ups. Some some leftovers. So yes. take something home. Um Thanks you. Home. Yeah. <laughs> Take that to go, Blake. Yes. Um, y'all are y'all are y'all are savages. Y'all are ninjas. I swear to God, if people are not we're, paying attention, we're work in progress. Nah, man. man. We're but just like everybody else. Y'all, I'm still figuring all this stuff out myself. Y'all are man. famous. I'm gonna tell you that right now. Y'all everywhere. If y'all not booking these two brothers for your podcast, I'm I'm just blessed that they are here to work with us as a team. Um, but I promise you, having them on your shows would definitely be beneficial. To spread the the wealth of information, um, I want to thank uh, RCG Mortgage. I want to thank Kev. I want to thank Lou. Um, I want to thank, thank Carlos EPM. For it all Loops. together, yes. appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all. Um, EPM Real Estate Photography, where we shoot these podcasts. Studio is a beautiful studio. Uh, shout out to Ark. Shout out to Mike. 
and uh, everybody that takes care of us as far as the production for what we do here. Uh, we appreciate you guys. Um, our next episode, Nelia Escobar, a uh, good close personal friend of mine from college who is a licensed uh, social worker, is going to be on the show. We're going to have a mental health episode because a lot of us go through it especially the stressors of what we do as a profession it's not just the people that we're helping it's us too you know what i mean so um we appreciate you watching we appreciate you tuning in peace and love and we'll see you next time peace